ज्ञानम परमम ध्येयम नॉलेज इज सुप्रीम let us begin today's lecture by recalling what we had done last time so given a linear transformation from a vector space v to w we defined what is called the kernel of the linear transformation so that was all vectors in the domain which go to zero vector whose image is zero so that is called the kernel or the null space of the linear transformation then we defined what is called the range so range is a image set so t u u belonging to the domain v so that is called the range space and uh, we showed that both of them are subspaces not only that they form a, a relation called the rank nullity relation dimension of the kernel that is the dimension of the null space so this kernel is a subspace of the domain plus the dimension of the range of t which is a which is range of t is a subspace of the codomain so if you add these two together you get dimension of v the domain space so that is a rank nullity theorem and uh, as a consequence of that uh, we uh, stated this theorem namely if t is a linear map from v to v from the same space to itself then the following statements are equivalent namely t is 1 1 it takes uh, di different uh, vectors to different vectors the kernel is the zero space there is no other element in the kernel other than the zero and t is on to so as rank nullity theorem with what we are saying is a linear transformation t is 1 1 if and only if it is on to so one of the properties is good enough to say the other in for functions that is not true in general for linear transformations v to v that is true and the proof is quite easy let us say t is 1 1 that means uh, different elements go to different elements so if uh, element v belongs to kernel of t then we know that t of v is 0 so that is same as t of 0 so that implies by 1 1 property that v should be 0 so 1 implies 2 and conversely you can show that 2 implies 1 namely look at the kernel of t and we want if it is 0 we want to show it is 1 1 so and suppose t of u equal to t of v then you can bring it on this side and use linearity property so that says that t of u v is equal to 0 that means that belongs to v minus u belongs to the kernel that means v is equal to u because kernel is only 0 so this v u min v minus u must be zero so v equal to u so one is equivalent to two uh, two is equivalent to three is a direct consequence of the rank nullity theorem by rank nullity theorem dimension of the range is equal to dimension of v minus dimension of the kernel right so if this dimension of the if this is zero that will happen if and only if dimension of the range is equal to dimension of v right so dimension of kernel of t will be zero if and only if these two are equal but this is a subspace so that means the range should be equal to the full space so that is what it says so dimension of the range is equal to dimension of v if and only if kernel is zero and that says says that 2 is equal to 3 so saying a linear transformation is 1 1 is equivalent to saying it is also on 2 and vice versa so that is a very useful property uh, later on we then looked at what is called the matrix of a linear transformation so we started looking at given a basis b1 b2 vn if we fix the order then this is called an ordered basis of the vector space v and for any vector v in v we know because this is a basis so there must be unique vectors alpha 1 alpha 2 uh, scalars alpha 1 alpha 2 alpha n say that v is a linear combination so these unique scalars alpha 1 to alpha n if we put them as a uh, column vector then this is called the coordinate vector of the vector v these are called the coordinates right how much you have to go 
uh, in the direction of v1 you have to go alpha 1, in the direction of v2 you have to go to alpha 2 and so on. So, these are called the coordinates of the vector v. So, the theorem says the following, suppose T is a linear transformation from v to w and we fix an ordered basis for v and fix an ordered basis for w. So, b1 is an ordered basis for the domain and b2 is an ordered basis for the codomain that is w. So, given these uh, ordered basis for the domain and the codomain fixed, uh, keep in mind v is dimension n and w is of dimension m. So, the claim is there exists a unique uh, matrix order m cross n where m is the dimension of w and n is the dimension of v. So, there is a unique matrix A of order m cross n says that if you take a vector v, take its image, so that will be in w. Look at its coordinate vector, it is same as take the coordinate vector of the original vector v, so that is the coordinate vector for v and multiply it by matrix. So, that is essentially saying that T of v can be obtained as matrix multiplication. right? Uh, in the beginning uh, previous lecture we have seen every matrix multiplication give you a linear transformation. So, this is other way around. So, uh, gives you association between uh, linear transformations and matrices. Starting one is equivalent to starting the other one. So, we uh, looked at an example last time. So, look at a linear transformation T from R 3 to R 2. So, this is given by T of x y z an element in R 3 the image is x minus 3 z, 2 x plus y and z. It is easy to check that this is a linear transformation. So, let us fix a basis on R 3 and a basis on R 2 and try to find out what is the matrix of this linear transformation. So, let us fix a, so let us fix a, the standard basis on the domain as well as on the right. So, if I put on R 3 what is the standard basis that is 1 0 0 0 1 0 and 0 0 1 that i j k and similarly i n j on R 2. So, let us take the first vector in domain R 3 the basis vector is 1 0 0 find out this image, image according to this formula that is the definition. So, x is equal to 1, y equal to 0, z is equal to 0 in this. So, that gives you T of 1 0 0 is 1 2. Similarly, T of 0 1 0 by this definition is 0 1 and T of uh, 0 0 1 is minus 3 1. So, what is the matrix? So, for the V 1 for the first vector whatever you get that is the first column. This is the second column and that is the third column. So, that gives you the matrix 1 2. So, this comes as the first column this comes as the second column and this comes as the third column. So, that is a matrix of the linear transformation right. Uh, so, here is uh, some uh, simple uh, properties which we will not prove, but we will use them. So, uh, given a basis uh, on the domain and codomain you can write down a matrix. The question is if I take two linear transformations and add them right what is the matrix of that transformation right what is the matrix of scalar multiple of a linear transformation so this gives a relation it says supposing t1 and t2 are two linear transformations okay l w v w means these are all set of all linear transformations from v to w right that is a set so if t1 and t2 are linear transformations then the claim is t1 plus t2 which is defined as T 1 plus T 2 of a vector v is T 1 of v plus T 2 of v like functions real valued functions. Alpha of T 1 is defined as alpha times T 1 of v. So, given T 1 and T 2 you have defined what is the addition of linear transformation this is the scalar multiple of linear transformations. The claim is both of them are again linear transformations. And if I fix a basis on V and W, then look at the sum of the linear transformation T1 plus T2, find out its matrix with respect to B1 on domain 
B2 on codomain. It is same as taking the matrices, finding the matrices of individual one and adding them. So the theorem just says addition, its matrix is same as finding matrix of each individual and adding them up. And same for scalar multiple. One can write a proof which is very easy, but will not go into the proof of this. Well, let us try to see some uh, illustration of this. Okay, let us look at these two transformations. T is given by so T is from R2 to R2. Okay, T of x y is equal to 2x plus 3 uh, 2x comma 3y. Another linear transformation S x y is x plus y x minus y. We are fixing a basis B on right 1 0 on the domain and fixing a basis C on the codomain. We are fixing a different basis right and want to see, we want to verify all those relations. So, what are the relations we want to verify that if I take the sum right find out the matrix of T plus S with respect to C on the domain and B on the codomain then this addition of this. Let us compute and verify, try to see whether it is okay, right. This will also give you an idea of how to compute things. So, let us look at T is from R2 to R2, T of x, y is equal to 2 x, 3 y, right. And what is the basis here in the domain that is given as C, the basis is 1 1 0 2 and basis on the codomain is given by B which is a standard basis 1 0 0 1 right. So, this C is the basis on R 2 which is the domain and B is the basis on the codomain. So, we want to find what is the matrix of T with respect to C from C to B, right. Okay. So, what do I do? I look at the basis on the domain, this is V1, V2. So, let us find what is T of the first one that is 1, 1, and similarly T of the other one 0, 2, right. So, what is T of 1, 1 here? 1, 1 that is gives me 2, comma 3 and T of uh, 0 2. So, this is 0, this is 2. So, that gives you 0 6, right. Now, this is to be written as a linear combination of elements of. So, this is a now T of something goes in R 2 in the codomain. There the basis is this B. So, we have to write this as a linear combination of elements of B. So, what will be linear combination 2 3? It is 2 times 1 0 plus 3 times 0 1. Similarly, this one is 0 times 1 0 plus 6 times 0 1. Is that okay? So, what is the matrix? So, this matrix comes out to be what is the first row? 2 3. So, the first column is 2 3, second column is 0 6. So, that is the matrix of this. So, okay. Let us find what is the matrix of the linear transformation S. What was S defined as? S of x y x plus y x minus y, right. Same process. So, what is S of 1 1 and what is S of 0 2? These two are the elements in the domain, basis elements of the domain. So, first vector, second vector what is s of 1 1 x plus y. Okay. So, that is 2 x minus y that is 0. What is s of 0 2? So, 2 minus 2 right. So, what is this equal to? So, this is 2 0. So, this is 2 times 1 0 plus 0 times the basis there is 1 0 0 1. So, I have to write it as a linear combination. So, that is 0 1 and this is equal to 2 times 1 0 
minus so let us write plus minus 2 times 0 1 clear. So, take an element in the domain basis element in the domain find its image according to the expression that is given write it as a linear combination of elements of the basis in the codomain. So, what are the vectors? So, that means our matrix uh, S with respect to C and B is equal to first row uh, first column 2 0 right second one 2 minus 2 ok. Is it clear to everybody what you are saying? So, this is 2 and this is 3. So, that comes as 2 and 3 here ok. Here the first one is 2 and 0. So, this comes out 2 and 0 right and if you want to write the second one that is 0 and 6. So, that is 0 and 6. Here it is 2 and uh, minus 2. So, 2 and minus 2 right. So, that is how you write the matrix of a linear transformation given a basis ordered basis in the domain and a ordered basis in the codomain. So, I have computed for T, I have computed for S right. You as an exercise I will leave you for you to try write down what is T plus S. So, let me write down what is T plus S. So, what is T plus S? So, T plus S of x y. So, that is T of x, uh, T of x y plus S of x y. So, what is T of x y? That we know it is equal to 2 x 3 y. So, it is 2 x 3 y plus and S of uh, x y is x plus y x minus y right. So, that means this is equal to, so if I, so it is 3 x plus y and x plus 2 y right. Once we have gotten that now we have to just find what is T plus S of the basis element. So, 1 1 for C what is that? What is T plus S of uh, the second element is 0 2 find out this right as a linear combination of the basis right. So, find out that. So, you will get some vector here, some vector here plus some vector here plus some vector here. So, what will be the first row right second will be I am not doing that computation I want you to do it yourself later on right. So, according to this formula compute what is T of this write this as a linear combination of elements in the core domain that gives you the rows and then verify that for T plus S C B the same as T of C B. So, with those two we have already computed S of C and B. So, verify that right. So, that is verification of the theorem we are not proving the theorem just verifying it ok. But in the process it is quite clear how to find the basis of uh, given a ordered basis in the domain and a ordered basis in the core domain how to find a matrix of that represent uh, of that linear transformation and then you can easily verify this also. So, that is the process required to verify ok. Let us go a step further not only for addition and scalar multiplication this holds this also holds for composition. See in uh, functions you can compose one function with another one right. If the range of one is in the domain of the other. So, same is possible here for example, let us take three vector spaces u, v and w ok. Their dimensions are dimension of u is k, dimension of v is n and dimension of w is a different dimension, different vector spaces possibly. Now, I have got a linear transformation from v to w and another transformation from w to u right. So, what I can do is I can take a vector v in v by t it will go to a vector t v in w and under s that vector will go to s of t v which is in u. 
So, that is a composition of the two linear transformations, right? Like composing maps. So, let us define what is called the composition S composite T from V to U. So, this is T here. So, T first applies to V. So, that what you will get? T of V that will be an element in W. Compute the image of that under S. So, that is S of T of V and that is an element in U. So, this is called the composite of the linear transformations. Okay. So, this is a map from V to the V to U, right, from the first to the last one. The claim is that this is again a linear transformation. Composite of linear transformations is again a linear transformation. Now, what we want to do is find out a relation supposing on so on V I fix a basis on uh, uh, on V I fix a basis on W I fix a basis and on U I fix a basis. Then I can find out what is the matrix of T. I can find out what is the matrix of S right. I can also find out the matrix of the composite right. The theorem says the matrix of the composite S composite T with respect to B 1 and B 3, B 1 is on the first one, B 3 is on the last one is same as find the matrix of S with respect to B 2 and B 3 and multiply it with the matrix of T with respect to B 1 and B 2. So, the matrix multiplication right that we define the funny way in the beginning you take this row, this column add and you get the igth entry that actually comes because of this reason. Okay. So, because that is a matrix for the composite that is how it should be actually. Right. So, we will not again prove this theorem, but note from the point of view of uh, computing things for the composite B 1, B 3, B 1 is on V, B 3 is on U and when you compute the matrix of that. So, here you see S is from B, S is from W to U. So, B 2, B 3 right B 2 is a basis there, B 3 is a basis there. So, it is B 2, B 3 T is matrix is with respect to B 1 and B 2. In the composite what is happening is these two are essentially something like right B 2 is getting removed right. So, it is for S composite T it is B 1 and B 3 is B 1 and B 3. Okay. Again we will not prove this theorem, but you can compute example you take S in the previous example itself you can take S and you can take T you can compose and find out the matrices of them and see that is a product of the matrices. But it gives a very nice uh, corollary supposing this S and T are related that they are inverse of each other supposing S and T are related and they are inverse of each other then what do you get this will be identity map right. So, this will be saying that identity matrix is equal to product of these two right. That means, that gives you the inverse of the inverse right inverse of the matrix of the linear transformation. If you start with T which is 1 1 or on 2 right and you know its matrix then you can compute the matrix of the inverse by just inverting that matrix. You do not have to do the computation again. So, let us write that as a consequence of this theorem namely if T is a linear transformation V to V and V is an ordered basis then T is bijective. What is bijective? That is same as 1 1 on 2 if and only if its matrix is invertible right and the matrix of the inverse linear transformation is same as inverse of the matrix right. The two interchange with each other. 